Hi, this is Doug Brown, author of Tracker, and I'm going to show you how to get started using Tracker to analyze uh, the motions of objects in videos. I'm going to assume that you've never used Tracker before, but have gotten it uh, uh, installed on your computer and you've opened it up, and this is what you should be looking at. A uh, uh, Tracker uh, works with uh, videos in tabs. There's a single tab open here that has the, the the name untitled. It's just a big empty uh, nothing right now. We'll have to import a video and, and start analyzing. Uh, but before we do, let's just take a look at the uh, the overall interface here. You see that there is this main view where the video is going to appear and that's where we'll be doing most of our work. Uh, over here on the right are some other secondary views that once we have some some objects uh, tracked then we'll be able to see plots and tables of the motion uh, over here. Now uh, there's a toolbar up along the top with a series of buttons and we're going to pay most attention to the buttons on the left end here uh, between the one here to where we open a video up to this one where we're going to create a new track. Uh, down below the main view is a video player uh, with a, a play button. Uh, you can reset that back to the beginning. You can step forward and step back over here. Uh, you can drag the slider to get to different places in the video. Of course, this is not very interesting with no video. Uh, but let's get started. So we'll go over here and first step is going to be to open a video. Uh, I have this interesting video from live photo videos uh, called Galileo's Projectile. Looks like this and if I play it you can see it's just a ball that rolls across a horizontal surface and then falls off the end. Uh, that looks like a good, good one for me to analyze. Uh, this is a, a good one uh, in particular because you see that it has a meter stick uh, in the field of view here. Uh, so we know the length of that. It's uh, easy to, to see and that's been uh, well done because it looks like the motion of the ball is in the same plane as the meter stick. That is, they're both the same distance away from the camera, uh, which is important for, for uh, accurate uh, distance measurements. We need to use the meter sticks to, cal to calibrate the video. So uh, if you look here, you'll see that um, you know, we open, we're going to save things here. We'll ignore these two for the time being. Um, these other three buttons right here are the ones we're going to use to uh, first uh, determine which portion of the video we want to analyze. Then we'll use this to set a scale so that we can calibrate the video. Uh, we'll use this to uh, look at the coordinate axes. And then once we have the video all set and, and calibrated, get our coordinate system set up right, then we can actually create a track and, and uh, follow the motion of the ball. So let's start with the, uh, the video. Uh, we can click on this button here to see what are called the uh, video clip settings. A video clip is, uh, rather than the entire video, uh, is defined simply by a start frame, a step size, which is the number of frames uh, that you uh, C between one step and the next and then an end frame and so uh, we want to pick out a start frame and end frame and potentially a step size to uh, uh, just to define the portion portion of the video that we want to analyze and and I could put in the numbers right here directly but instead I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel this and show you that there's another way down here you see the little black arrows at one end and the other of the of this uh, scrubber bar and if I hold the mouse over there it says start frame I can drag that if I click and drag I'm watching the ball move across the table and right there it's finally in the air and it uh, becomes a projectile that's where I'm gonna start uh, keeping track of the motion of the ball at the other end if I come down here uh, the ball comes down into this gray area. It's a little bit harder to see. So I'm going to move backwards one step. Uh, let's just go back to and that way the portion of the video that we're going to be analyzing starts here and ends here. All right. Now I could 
uh, increase the step size also. Increasing the step size would mean that I would be skipping videos. Only look at every other video or every third, I mean, excuse me, frames. Every fra uh, other frame or every third frame. But, uh, but here, there's only uh, 10 or 12 uh, images that we're going to have to keep track of, and that's not so many, so, so we'll just use uh, all of those. Uh, now the next step is going to be to uh, calibrate the video. So if I click on this button, uh, it, uh, I have to make a new uh, calibration tool. I'm going to pick a calibration stick. Uh, later on I can show you more about these other tools. Uh, which are some of them are very powerful. But a, a calibration stick is one of the easiest things to use. As soon as I chose that, it created one in the middle. And uh, here it is. It, it has two little crosshairs. Uh, and it shows me that the distance between those crosshairs is 100 units. Now, a Tracker doesn't actually have uh, anywhere where you tell it that the units are meters or centimeters or whatever you might be. So these are just arbitrary units. Uh, what I'd like to do is set up the scale so that the there's exactly one unit between one end of the meter stick and the other end of the meter stick. So the way I can do that, oh, and you know, I see that, I, I don't know if you can see the, the blue very easily, so let's do this. Up here, uh, uh, there's a, a, another secondary toolbar below the main one, and uh, when, when I uh, created and then selected this calibration stick, uh, I see that there's various information uh, about it that shows up. If I click on the name of it, it actually pops up a little menu uh, at which uh, includes a color item. So I'm going to uh, take and, and make that uh, say yellow, just so it stands out a little more. All right. Now, here's where we can actually use this thing to calibrate. I, if I grab one end of this, I can move it up to one end of the meter stick. I'll take the other end and move it down to the other end of the meter stick like so All right and those if I need to uh, I can I can zoom in I'm doing that with the mouse right now but let me show you that I can always up here click on this zoom level button and uh, let's say go to 200 percent when I do that now if I just click and and drag the uh, the video frame around I can I can come up to places I I need to see. So uh, that's uh, pretty accurate up at that end of the meter stick and that's pretty good down here where I've placed the little crosshairs right next to the ends of the meter stick. All right. Now it still says a hundred there. I don't know if you can see. So this uh, oops, this meter stick, sorry about that, I keep uh, using my mouse wheel to uh, zoom in and out. It's a, a very convenient way to do that. Um, anyway, this uh, I want this to say one. So I just uh, click on the, the readout there and I type in 1, hit the enter key and now it says 1.000. So I have calibrated my meter stick and uh, I have calibrated my video. And that way uh, any measurements I take uh, should be uh, re accurately reflect the, uh, the true uh, distances that the ball moves in the real world. All right. Now I can click this button again and it hides that. Right? I click it once to show it, click it again to hide it. And right? I'm going to just go ahead and hide it. And let's go click on this third one now. Here's where I uh, bring up the coordinate axes. There's an origin and there's an, an x-axis, y-axis, and so forth. Um, now, it, it's not critical, but it's convenient for me to, for example, uh, maybe place the origin uh, so that the initial position of the ball is right at the origin. Right? It's also, uh, in this case, it's, uh, the, the video is uh, you know, well aligned with the table, so it's a horizontal table, and boy, that sure looks like the, uh, the line here that defines a horizontal line in Tracker is uh, pretty parallel to that table, so we're just going to leave that alone. If for some reason the camera were tilted, then we might uh, wish to click on the x-axis and move the the tilt around. We can tilt the axes, but uh, I'm going to uh, put it back to uh, zero so that it's uh, just horizontal. Now again, I can hide that once I have the coordinate axes set up the way that I want them to do. And now I'm actually ready to mark, you know, to, to track the object itself.
So to do that, we create a point mass track. All right. By default, it has a name of mass A. This track control, this floating control comes up that uh, allows me to get to buttons that, that uh, uh, so I can change the, uh, the properties of the, of the uh, track easily. Uh, there is this uh, notice though that when the track is selected uh, the information about the track is also up here on this secondary toolbar so the very same uh, set of uh, menu options are available to me there as they are down here same set of menus All right. I can change the mass of this object this is a this is a uh, this track is supposed to to represent a a single point mass which has a mass I'm going to just let its mass be one by uh, which is the default because uh, since all I care about is the motion, I don't really care about the, the mass of the ball at this point in time. So to mark uh, the object, right, even though I created the track, I, I don't have any marks on here yet. I have to hold down the shift key. Right? I just push the shift key and I see that the cursor turns into this little crosshair. And uh, if I then click on the ball, right, it left a mark and the video automatically stepped forward to the next frame. If I hold down the shift key again, notice the previous mark here, I'm not holding it down. The previous mark is showing. As soon as I hold down the shift key to mark the next one, that last one will go away so that it doesn't get in my way. So I'll mark it again. I'll continue on down. Okay, I've finished marking the video. If I step through one frame at a time, you can see my marking is not particularly accurate. It would be easy though for me if I wished to go back, zoom in a little bit, and then just click and drag any of these points to correct their positions if I wanted to. Uh, another thing I notice is that uh, when I replay this, it uh, doesn't just show me the uh, current position of the ball. Uh, it shows me some uh, trails, shows me where the ball was in the last three frames. Uh, in addition, if we look over here, we see there's now uh, data showing up in the table and the plot. Uh, the plot, by default, shows the uh, horizontal position versus time. I can change that uh, by clicking either of these variables. For example, if I click the uh, horizontal position variable, it brings up a big long list. Maybe I'm more interested in looking at the uh, vertical velocity as a function of time. Uh, that looks something like that. Uh, I have a table down here which by default just shows me the uh, x and y coordinates of the position uh, versus time. But again, I can add and remove whatever columns I want. If I click this uh, table button here, you see it brings up a, a list uh, that shows all the possible uh, columns that I could show. Uh, maybe just for interest, I'll show this uh, vertical velocity column as well. Right, and we see it now it shows up in my, my table. So uh, let's suppose that uh, what we're interested in doing is uh, determining whether this has a constant acceleration. And if it does, then what's the value of that acceleration? Well, if it had a constant acceleration, we know that the plot of the vertical velocity versus time, assuming it's a downward acceleration, uh, would be a straight line and because my marking was rather sloppy then that's not very straight but we might be convinced it's straight enough to uh, to look at it in more detail so what I'll do is right click and choose the analyze item to open up the data in data tool now data tool has a curve fitting option and if I open that up I see down in this area that uh, by default a linear fit is chosen the auto fit button is uh, checked so that it's going to automatically find the best parameters and it shows me the fit equation v sub y equals a t plus b it's showing me that it has a slope that is an acceleration in this case of minus 9.79 plus or minus 0.27 meters per second squared because remember we calibrated the video in meters and the uh, time base is seconds. So that's a remarkably good fit. And the last thing we have to do is save our work. So we'll go to the file menu, save tab as. I'm saving it on the desktop. 
we'll give it the default name. All right, so that's, uh, I think, uh, all I need to show you for you to get started using Tracker. Bye-bye.